Welcome to BC Mnemonics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the astronomical ring dial, the direct historical predecessor to the equatorial ring dial. Now, this dial is, in many ways, very similar and almost identical to the equatorial ring dial, except for the way it sets its date. So with the equatorial ring dial, uh, the center most uh, ring or component is a central sighting, um, a central notice with a declination bridge that is also parallel to the Earth's axis. This dial still features representation of the axis, these two pivot points, but instead of a central declination bridge, that bridge um, and notice is expanded outward into an allidade assembly. So rather than sliding a single notice up or down the, um, the axis, this dial sets the date by adjusting two sighting vanes um, according to declination, so 23.4 degrees above or below the equator. This would be for the summer solstice and this for the winter solstice. But before we get into the actual function of the dial, let's take a look at its various scales, as this dial is a bit complicated at first glance. So before we even get into the scales, actually, the first thing you'll notice uh, handling this dial is that the, um, the central allidate assembly also features a universal horizon plate astrolabe. Now this is technically um, unnecessary to the function of the, of the dial uh, and, it, and can be considered a completely uh, separate um, instrument. So, in that sense, we won't be covering in this video, but if you want to take a look at the, uh, the function of an astrolabe type, of an astrolabe of this type, I would recommend taking a look at the, uh, the astrolabes page. Uh, there is a dedicated video on universal horizon plate astrolabes. But again, because this, this uh, astrolabe is essentially just filling the empty space created by this allidade, uh, we won't be covering it as part of this demonstration. The outermost scale, is a meridian ring. So uh, as you can see here, this meridian ring it provides part of the skeleton of the celestial sphere with the horizon defined by these two points, the zenith, and the nadir. So when suspended and in a functional position telling the time, this meridian ring, this outermost ring, will indicate the local meridian or the north-south line. This meridian is also um, adorned with, um, with uh, an altitude scale. This can come, in, come in, uh, into play when you're uh, modeling the movement of the sun. You can tell uh, how high in the sky it will culminate on a given day. Uh, nested right within that, we have the latitude scale, which is used uh, when setting the latitude of the dial for uh, location of use. Within that, we have the equatorial ring, which represents the sun's path at the equator, um, or sun's path at the equinoxes, rather. Um, and it also carries the hours, just like uh, every other equatorial dial, and most, most closely the equatorial ring, uh, universal equatorial ring dial. Now within that, we have the um, the, the core of the dial, which is this uh, allidade assembly. So as I said before, the reverse side of this assembly uh, has the, the astrolabe, um, and that influence is continued over to this side, as much of the, uh, the scales are unnecessary to the function of the dial itself, and are more so there to provide the, the astrolabe with its full range, full range of function. Um, well, as full a range of function as you can get with um, universal horizon plate, at least. So, uh, for instance, the, the scales that aren't expressly um, rela related to the function of the dial are the, um, the zodiac scale and the Gregorian month scale, although they can come in handy uh, when you know the date but not the zodiac degree. In that sense, you can use these scales with the dial to figure out where to set the allidade. There's also a shadow square for use with this allidade, as this allidade does double as the allidade of the astrolabe, uh, but again, we won't be using that here. 
Now, how do you actually use this style during the day to tell the time? Well, the first step is to set the date. So as I said before, if you don't know the date, you can consult these nested uh, declination scales. But I'll save you the trouble. Um, today's date um, aligns with the 23rd degree of Gemini. It is quite close to the summer solstice. So on this declination scale, summer solstice is defined by this topmost boundary. Uh, the scale gets quite close and crowded toward the summer solstice, but I'll do my best to align it roughly, align the alidade, roughly 23 degrees, about two thirds through. I'd say that's accurate enough. And now with this, the next step is to set the latitude. So that is when this, uh, this scale comes into play, the one nested just within the meridian ring. So when setting the latitude, you're going to want to align this zenith marker, this innermost edge of the zenith, with the latitude of use. So for my case, I'm at currently uh, 20, 20, uh, 44 sorry, degrees north. So I will set this um, ring to this position right here, as this would be 40, 45, one degree below that, 44. Now with all that done, this dial is ready to be used. So how do we actually use it? Well, the first step, um, there we go. Uh, the first step is to uh, unfold everything and allow the dial to be uh, suspended from a finger. Uh, the end goal of this and what will allow us to actually read the time as well as identify the direction of true north is to have um, these two sighting veins align with the sun. And what that means is that we'll have a beam of sunlight shining directly through both of these alidades. Now to do that, we'll suspend the dial uh, and uh, rotate it and rotate the alidade assembly until we find that point where the sun streams directly through both sides. Now let's just pretend that the sun is right back this way, so right over my shoulder. Um, I am suspending the dial like so, pivoting the alidade assembly about the celestial axis, and I find that um, everything matches up and the sun streams through right here. So the sun streams through the alidades, I get a reading, um, I can take the dial down at this point um, and read the time along this outer edge. And the place where I read it is right here, the edge of the alidades ring um, closest to the sun, closest to that uppermost alidade that's pointing to the sun. And what do I get? Just a little past 8 a.m. So, um, and the reason I know it's 8 a.m., by the way, is uh, just if you visualize this as the celestial sphere, you have the axis, this is north, as this is the north celestial pole. Uh, you can imagine this, um, this alidade, this, this, this site, as the sun. So if you consider the tip of my finger as the sun, uh, you can imagine this as the celestial sphere. We have the sun rising in the east, um, indicating the morning hours, culminating at noon. And again, you can determine the, uh, the point of culmination by consulting this outermost meridian uh, scale. And again, the sun is my finger, setting back on the western horizon, indicating the afternoon hours and, um, and sunset. So uh, in that sense, the sun is rising in the east. I can tell the eastern um, portion of the sky. These are clearly the morning hours. And again, I take a reading like this, it's a little past 8 a.m. So uh, I can tell this is true solar time. If I want, I can correct for civil time, applying the longitude correction, uh, equation of time, and if applicable, the uh, daylight savings correction. But uh, that is how you would tell the time using this dial during the day. Uh, I hope this demonstration was valuable, and thank you for watching.